Preacher here. This is a special edition of Biker Bread. We'll be playing a clip from Andrew Farley asking about people on whether you sleep when you die or whether you're with the Lord. You know, I've had a few people come up to me and tell me, oh, I think so-and-so is sleeping. But, you know, when I look at the Bible, when I look at Scripture, I don't see that. You know, when Jesus was on the cross with the thief, what did he say to the thief? He said, today you'll be with me and my father in paradise. He didn't say, hey, today you're going to be sleeping and waiting for me to complete everything and wait for my return. No. And then when I look at the the story of, of Lazarus, the beggar and the rich man, you know, you look at them, they're, they're waiting in, in Abraham's bosom and, and they're not sleeping. They're aware of what's going on with each other. The the rich man's tortured in hell and the and, and Lazarus is, is enjoying paradise. And so it's like maybe maybe they get it from from when Saul went to the witch indoor and, and, and had Samuel awoke, you know? Or maybe when Peter and Paul refer to somebody who has died as being asleep. I mean, I can see you might refer to their physical body as being asleep because your body's going to wait to be glorified. But absent from the body, present with the Lord, your, 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 your soul, your spirit is still alive. Anyway, let's check out this video and this question answer from Andrew Farley to San Diego, and we'll talk with Michelle. Hey, Michelle, what have you got for us? Hi, thanks for taking my call. Yes. Um, I was calling because I, I've heard several scriptures, well, a couple of scriptures that refer to those of us who die in the Lord. It, it is to be absent from the body and present with the Lord mm -hmm. immediately. And then um, I've been told that, well, we're not really, they're really not doing anything but sleeping the whole time. So it's almost like it's almost like when you uh, have a surgery and they put you under the local anesthesia. You don't know what's going on until it's time to wake up. And so I was just trying to get some clarification on what is actually happening to those that have passed away in the Lord. Um, are they just sleeping or is there anything going on? Okay, yeah, I hear you. Well, for those who are listening, I mean, what uh, Michelle's referring to, you see a passage in Second Corinthians chapter 5. Uh, verse 8, it says, We're confident, I say, and would prefer to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. And so that at least implies, if it doesn't directly state, that Paul is very excited about getting away from this body. And, you know, he almost has a death wish. I'm not going to say it's unhealthy uh, because he's just excited about being with Jesus Christ. He's excited about seeing the Father face to face. So it's not a death wish, but he's weighing his options. He's thrilled about his ministry, yet he's thrilled to be with God face to face. He's thrilled about what's happening among the Corinthians, and yet he's excited about his heavenly destiny. And so Paul's not excited to fall asleep in a holding tank. Uh, Paul's not excited about the idea of circling heaven's airport for 5,000 years, hoping to land someday. What Paul seems to be excited about is the moment that you eject from this physical body, you are then at home, and you are at home with the Lord. So this idea of soul sleep uh, does not seem to be what he is after, uh, it seems that he's excited about the thrill of being in God's immediate presence. Uh, and you see that in Philippians 1, uh, verse 23 as well. He says, I'm torn between the two. I desire to depart and be with Christ, which is better by far. So whether it's Philippians 1, 23 or 2 Corinthians 5, 8, I mean, these passages are suggesting pretty clearly that upon death, you are immediately in the presence of the Lord. Uh, so the concept of soul sleep uh, is not something that uh, is really supported by Scripture. I mean, you've got some, some people out there that are pushing that. I think uh, they're trying to justify uh, the timing of all of this. And um, so... You know, uh, 
Uh, Paul talks about uh, death like it's falling asleep. But the reason he's doing that is not because you're asleep for 8,000 years. It's just that, uh, you know how the world looks at death. I mean, the world looks at death as the grand finale, the cutoff. That's it. Back to dust. Nothing else. Nothing happens. Nothing behind that curtain. When everything fades to black, that's it. That's what the world will tell you. Uh, But... What Christ is telling us is this is just the beginning. I mean, this is a trial run. This is practice. Uh, We're just getting started here. We get to enjoy eternity with God forever. So uh, it's appropriate then for Paul and for the New Testament to use this word sleep because it's like falling asleep and waking up in a whole new place, continuing on with your life. So there's a world of difference between dying and falling asleep. And that's all Paul is saying. He is not supporting the idea that you and I are going to be in some sort of waiting room, you know, like you're in the dentist office waiting to get your wisdom teeth pulled or something, and you're there looking at magazines, thumbing through all the car magazines or whatever, trying to uh, pass the time until the dentist finally lets you in. Uh, That is not at all the picture that's painted in the New Testament. Again, absent from the body, present with the Lord. Paul says, I'm torn between the two. And that's because he's excited to, quote, be with Christ, which is better by far. So uh, don't buy it. The idea of soul sleep is not scriptural. Instead, uh, you know what I say? I don't know this for certain, but I do know that... uh, You know, we're going to die, whether it's April or October or February, we're going to die at some point in human history, and it's going to have a date to it. But when you hit heaven, everything changes. I mean, there's no sun, moon, and stars. You don't have the rotation of the earth dictating time. You don't have spring, summer, fall, winter. You don't have 24-hour days like we have. You don't have wristwatches and grandfather clocks. And, you know, God invented all of that. He created all of that for us, the, the, the seasons and the days and the, the sun and our revolution and rotation of the earth. He invented all that. He created it for our benefit. But in heaven, all bets are off. I mean, eternity is very different. And time is not measured in the same way. I mean, we don't know a lot about eternity, but we do know it's different than God's physical creation because it's a spiritual realm. And so what I'm saying is, what if? What if when every single one of us dies, what if we as believers awaken to the sound of the trumpet? So, yeah, is it sounding like time travel to you? Well, sort of, except I'm just saying you exit this world and you enter eternity, and at what point do you enter? I can't answer that for you, but there's no passage of Scripture that has you and me sitting around in a dark holding tank for thousands of years waiting for God to call our number. So I hope that helps, uh, Michelle. Please uh, reach out to us again anytime. Great to hear from you. And by the way, folks, the great news, the encouraging news uh, about everything I just explained is if you have loved ones who've passed away, who've fallen asleep in Christ, well, what we're saying is they're with Jesus right now. No hesitation, no waiting period. They're with the Lord right now. And that is certainly what the Apostle Paul believed and was looking forward to.